Jacob. Yo, what's up, bro? This whole uh, podcast thing. I've been thinking. Yeah, what about it? It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I think so. It's a pretty cool gig, you know? We're just yeah. talking about D&D and stuff. You know, you know it'd be cool. even sweeter, though? What? If we were sponsored. We we are sponsored. We're sponsored? Yeah, by Anchor FM. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Michael did Michael, that. Michael yeah. does an ad read before every <laughs> episode. Yeah. 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 No, he never he never really mentions that. So. I guess during the recording now, but. <laughs> so hello and welcome <laughs> to Traveler's <laughs> Tips and Tales. I am Ben. And I'm Jake. And today joining us will be our good friend Dalton. Say hello, Dalton. Hi, how's it going? Unfortunately, Michael has been stuck in the shadow fell. <laughs> he will not be joining us today. But he will not be joining us today. We have the next best thing, which is the two of us. <laughs> Plus a guest. <laughs> the two Yay. of us ensue chaos. Yes. I believe. And uh, <laughs> today we will be talking about plot twists. Kind of like mm. Michael not being here. <laughs> gotcha on the viewers or Ooh. listeners, I guess. Yeah. They don't, they don't so, view. <laughs> first of all, what even is a plot twist? Why are we even talking about it? A plot twist. What, what is a plot twist? It's an unexpected development in a book, a film, TV, etc. You know, so in this case, D&D, you know. Yeah. Unexpected can also be development. A role-playing game. But just said D&D. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is what plot twist is. They can be super important and they can be very effective at telling a story and changing up the narrative in a way that your players won't expect or that fellow players won't expect if it's part of your backstory. They are definitely a very useful tool that I think a lot of people when they're writing stories or when they are crafting campaigns or or backstory visions or anything like that should keep in their in their back pocket. They should always keep that plot twist. I, I always like it when a when a piece of media keeps me on my toes. It's always fun. Yeah. It's definitely when they, they come out of nowhere with a plot twist that no one would have expected. Oh, and yeah, they yeah, just, yeah. they just slap you with it. That is for sure, for sure. really, really cool. And a fan of plot twists, as most people are, but a real big fan of plot twists is our friend Dalton here. Hello, Dalton. <laughs> Hi. He favors a lot of plot twists whenever he runs a game, which is not often, but when he does, he, he likes to throw in very at good. least one at least one and he always knows just <laughs> when to throw them out there oh yeah um i really like to lead on my players uh mentally make them think that what they're doing is you know for their greater good but then i really just enjoy the looks on my players faces i pull the rug right up <laughs> when you rip it right out of their souls <laughs> some might consider that cruel <laughs> but i consider it good right <laughs> I consider it entertaining. I am a really big fan of movies where they like to have stories that, you know, really reach out to people who are watching it, get the viewer's attention, and then have some sort of twist involved just to, you know, mess with their mentality on the movie and be like, wait, so if that's possible, is this also possible? And then it gets people thinking about a lot of things. And it really makes the story look a lot more in depth, but easily in there are multiple ways to make it seem like a, a terrible thing. Like a lot of media have had terrible examples. Of plot it's yeah, it's easy to mess up. It's so, easy to do it incorrectly. Let me ask you guys this: Do okay. you think that a plot twist is always necessary to have a good story? Not always, but it's always nice to have one every now and then. I think I think they're better when infrequent. I should say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I don't think there's anything wrong with having a movie or a show or a game that's just a pure archetype of one thing. It's purely yeah. an action movie, or it's purely a, a racing film, or it's purely a mystery. You know, yeah, something like along you. those lines. But it's always nice when they they smack you across the face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. As long as it is infrequent, you can't have like M Night yeah. Shyamalan movies, or it's like. <laughs> Plot it's twist like, every, you know, every scene. you know that something <laughs> something dumb's gonna happen at some point. <laughs> yeah. Not having a plot twist definitely makes it more fluid and easier to like maintain. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
Uh, and sometimes not having a plot twist is a plot twist in and of itself. Because if your players are expecting a plot twist and they are expecting you to pull one out and they're waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it, and then curtain closes, end of the session, end of the game, and there was never a plot twist, that would throw me <laughs> off even worse, to be honest. <laughs> like, like a good example is um, when I used to play with my brother in D&D, I threw one mimic at them and it was the first chest of the dungeon and then all the other chests were normal. Freaked him and the party out for the entire dungeon. And it was really entertaining. Because they were all with sticks at a distance being like, is this going to bite us? Is this going to bite us? <laughs> Boom! And it slammed on the ground. Adventures. <laughs> never open a chest again. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Hey, if it's worth keeping, it can survive a fire. Burn the chest. <laughs> It's not always true. Please chance. don't do that. <laughs> Scrolls, no. The wizard is so unhappy. Oh, yeah. Can't have a wizard if you're doing that. <laughs> or a historian or a librarian. Or, any, or anyone, any nerd. Or anyone wearing light armor. <laughs> <laughs> or even worse, anyone wearing no armor. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Looking at you, wizards and sorcerers. Yeah. Maybe so, monks, eh, you know. Well, what does a monk have to gain from a yeah, depends chest? On the monk. Depends on the monk. Anyways. I guess. They could be using a stick. <laughs> so today we wanted to talk to you guys about some good examples and some bad examples of some plot twists in some media that we have heard and seen. And we also wanted to tell you a couple stories where we encountered plot twists. In our games. In our games. At home. Yeah. First off, do you guys want to talk about the... Uh, <laughs> The, the the good the good of plot twists yeah let's do let's do yeah let's do this one the good one one of my favorite plot twists is from the movie the 2010 movie Shutter Island where um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character is at the beginning of the movie according to viewers is a marshal investigating the psychiatric facility but then by the end of the movie it's discovered that he is a patient himself and the entire thing was a whole play on his mind. Well, dude, dude, and... dude. Spoilers. Come on. <laughs> yeah, man. It's only, it, it came out in 2010. Not everyone's seen it yet. <laughs> My bad. Sorry for people who are going to watch the reboot if there ever is one. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. But Continue. It's, it's, it's a really interesting plot twist because the audience is so engaged with the fact that this man is trying to figure out this mystery of this island only to discover that he is a part of the mystery himself. And it really shows a lot of, like, character development and the fact that my entire life is a lie, my entire world has been built on a lie, and nothing makes sense. And it was discovered that the patient he was looking for was actually his wife that he killed after he went insane because she killed their kids. It, it's, it's a movie that you definitely have to watch, and I highly recommend you know, yeah, it sounds that, interesting. Hearing that out loud, it sounds a lot like a story I'll be telling later. But that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if if a certain someone got inspiration from a certain maybe movie. maybe one of our one of our friends. But yeah, I think I think a good thing to think about of a good plot twist is like if I watch a movie right and I get the plot twist happens and I'm like swept out from under my feet you can really tell if, that it's a good plot twist if I can still watch the movie again and like just keep looking out throughout the movie and see all the foreshadowing of this, this specific plot twist that that just makes it so much more ooh just so good to me if I can watch the movie a second time and and oh and, pick out exactly what led to there is to the ending a certain show that i love that i have watched season one of 18 times <laughs> and every single oh, right. time i found something new that i did not notice before that was foreshadowing a future events interesting it is very what, good what, what show is that that would be uh seven deadly sins on netflix yeah, it is full of foreshadowing. It's actually season one is very, very good. Maybe I'll make you watch it again with me. <laughs> Nineteen, here we go. <laughs> one day, maybe. Waiting after on quarantine. That, waiting on that new season. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's really interesting. It sounds 
really cool. I wish I'd seen the movie. It definitely sounds good. Yeah. Another great example of really good plot twists. This one's a little more recent, so spoiler alert. Joker, the 2019 Joker. movie. Yes. This guy, in the movie, they introduce uh, Arthur Fleck. They introduce a love interest for him in the mm -hmm. movie and as it goes through you know every after he meets her his life gets better he goes out and he gets what he needs which is someone that recognizes him as someone who's funny someone who's successful yeah, someone who has for who he is potential and as it goes to the movie eventually he has a bit of a breakdown again and you find out that that entire relationship everything was all in his head it was all in his imagination yeah yeah he imagined like talking to her in the hallway because they they live in the same apartment building, and so like, it imagined and like it was it's just crazy. Yeah, I, I I myself in the theater kind of saw it coming, but it was still just as good. I think. Yeah, I I didn't really see it coming, but I was also paying attention to a lot of different things in that movie. Yeah, yeah. There's really... a there's a thousand things to look at in that movie. Yeah. So. Yeah, it oh, was yeah, super good. I very much. Did not see that one coming. And even if you did see it, it's still great. It's still, yeah, it was still a good plot twist. I was like, oof. Because cause it gave me that that feeling inside where I was just like, I knew it. I, I dang it, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of didn't want to believe it. You're like, no, he's got yeah, something good yeah. in his life. I was like, gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah. This poor man's. Yeah, that was a great example of a plot twist. <laughs> I think the thing that makes those plot twists good is that it's possible to predict them, but even if you do, you don't necessarily want... You don't want it to happen. You don't necessarily want it to be that way. I yeah. think that it's like you're dreading it. You're like not wanting it to come about because of what it is, what it implies. It's it's kind of like hanging out in the back of your skull, you know? Yeah, and it's this kind of nagging fear. It's like, oh, is this really what's going to happen? Is this what's happening? Yeah. All right. Well, we also have a few bad examples <laughs> of <laughs> plot like you, we only We only wanted to point out one. We really it's only wanted bad. to point out one, but it, 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 it's pretty bad. It is on the topic. <laughs> the 2000 movie, the year 2000, Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. Now, I have to say, right at the start, okay, I went in expecting this movie to be Mortal Kombat levels of bad, and I actually <laughs> got a pretty decent movie out of it, so I enjoyed this movie. I, I encourage you to go check it out. I liked it, because A, it's Dungeons and & Dragons, and B, it's not as bad as I was expecting. I will say, because Ben kind of likes this movie i have avoided it at all costs <laughs> yeah it's it's like really cheesy 2000s but it's it's good i mean i liked it <laughs> i bet it's probably good but i'm just doing it to be stingy at this point spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen this rare gem okay uh this movie this these two best friends and as they go through the movie one of them eventually gives his life for the sake of the party he dies and everyone kind of just accepts this and moves on, and they, they finish out their quest. Well, at the very end of the movie, one of the people in his party, the elf that joined, says, You have this special power to the main character. This special power that we could have told you about at the beginning of the movie, but we didn't because we didn't feel like it was important. You can bring <laughs> people back to life. How do you do that? We don't know, but we're gonna not show you. <laughs> What? So they didn't show it. <laughs> so what they did at the end is they all were like, gather around. He's going to use his special power. He's going to bring his friend back to life. And they all go through a portal. And that's the end of the movie. That's the plot twist. The plot twist is that there might be a sequel one day and there's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. It's only 20 years ago. Yeah, it that's might true. Happen. Maybe, it might happen. Maybe I should become a director and make the sequel. There you go. There you go. And then the plot twist is in your hands. You can make it a good one. That is an example of a bad plot twist. A, no one saw it coming. It's impossible to predict. B, <laughs> nothing came about from it. C, it was just dumb. <laughs> and D, is it the end of the movie? The that, very which end. doesn't necessarily make it bad, but there's nothing after that. There's just not even like an imagining of what, oh, what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. You just don't know how it's going to happen. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth for what was otherwise a not bad movie. I feel like it almost makes the movie sound like a spoof movie to me. 
Oh well, it it's kind of like, is. It's, it's trying to be bad. A little bit. I did not. I did not like that. That at the end. Otherwise, great movie though. I liked it. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I'll definitely look into that. The only other thing I don't like about that movie is how they uh, portray a beholder. Like they threw one in there because it's Dungeons and Dragons, but they threw it in yeah. as like a guard. What? Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not like a leader or anything. It's just like floating around a place. It's just guarding it. It's like how? What? What? Yeah. But it was still like eyeball. Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's still a pole, a full beholder, but it was just a guard. Dude, that that's so lame. Yeah, but at least the holders are they way more scary there. than that. They're way more scary than that. Yeah. Well, I feel like that they do it better than. Than like dungeon, uh, than like uh, Stranger Things, where they they name things after D and D monsters, but they're not like like them at all. Yeah, Demogorgon. <laughs> like the Demogorgon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's this like weird skinny like you know plant thing that like you know I don't know eats you or whatever, mm-hmm. and then actual Demogorgon in D and D. Uh... Uh, giant two headed, <laughs> giant two headed just... demonic prince that drives people insane with a look. <laughs> Sweat's just running down my face. Oh yeah, because you guys just recently fought Demogorgon too. Oh, you know. But that's you know. a story for another day. That's a story for another podcast, another episode, I, I, a whole I, other I, podcast. I, I decided to. Um, I went to Google and I decided to look at what this beholder looked like in this movie. And boy, oh boy, is this interesting. <laughs> now I feel like I have to look it up. Oh, no. You, you really need to look at this, Jacob. You really need to look at this. It's fantastic. If I look it up, everyone's going to hear my really loud keyboard, so maybe I shouldn't. Probably. <laughs> probably. I don't even know what specifically, how to word this search. Because, like, if I, what the heck? I literally said Dun- Dungeon the Dragons 2000 Beholder. I just put Dungeon the Dragons Beholder, Beholder in the movie. <laughs> What? Yeah, oh, right? you can also see them kind of sneaking by in one of those pictures. That's funny. <laughs> what the heck? Maybe we can get Michael to put in some <laughs> some stills of of this. Just this so, just so everyone at home understands, if they don't want to Google YouTube. this, it looks yeah. like if a really, really old man got turned <laughs> into just a head with one eye and was just floating around <laughs> angrily. All the time, <laughs> but it has a mouth. And it, does it have eye stalks? Oh, it does have eye stalks. It, you can't really see them in that one picture I'm looking at. Yeah, but it it it's weird. It kind of looks fuzzy in some parts. Yeah, oh, two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> kind of looks like a like a peach fuzz kind of a thing. Yeah, well, like the fuzz on a peach. Anyways, that, that aside, that was a bit of sidetrack. <laughs> that aside, we have brought for you guys today couple of stories two hopefully quick stories uh, we can take we're, our we're time. squeezing two of them in we can take our time it's okay that's all right, all right so first one comes from our good friend dalton who is mm-hmm. here today to share with us his amazing story and by the way dalton i would just like to say when it comes to fey creatures you are the best dm i have ever seen in my life <laughs> <laughs> I, I ran what what fey have i ran other than hags uh, you've done a couple different things with Faye, like just talking about Faye and your ideas on Faye. you yeah, are you are also, also just you as one of your characters lava lamp the wizard big on just hanging out big on Faye. but yeah. yeah yeah your your Faye, um, your Faye adventures sound really really fun and i would love for you to do more of them I kind of felt bad because we did this one shot at like two in the morning <laughs> and it was me, Ben, and one of our other friends, the person who plays Kalsonu that we talked about a couple episodes ago. But like, like, I feel like it didn't do us just, it didn't, it didn't do you justice. Cause we did it like so late at night, <laughs> but Hey, everyone was all tired and half asleep. So apparently you guys, it was fun. Hey, all I remember is I was you guys into the town. 
<laughs> I spent 10 minutes describing the town just to take you guys to one building for five minutes. <laughs> and then we left. <laughs> anyways, anyways. It was continue. more like 15, Sorry. to be honest. <laughs> just, <laughs> you had so much lore for this town that we were never going to we spend like, time we in. Like, we were like, cool, 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 cool. And then we were like, all right, let's leave. We got to go. <laughs> I remember getting so in depth about the graveyard and all that. Yeah, but, it's um, all right. It's the all right. was created for me to try out a new method of uh, storytelling and be able to see if I can get players invested into the story only to pull out the rug from underneath them. Uh, so the characters, I had them go into this town with the mission of trying to find a missing child. And after finding the manner of that missing child, the parents were like, hey, our daughter went missing overnight. And it's a couple days. It was a couple days before her birthday. Her thirteenth birthday is tomorrow. Can you guys go find her so we can celebrate? And also, you know, because we love our kid. And the party being the party, uh, thank God you guys are such easy players to work with. You guys were like, yeah, adventure. Let's go do that instead of <laughs> hey, let's go sit at a bar for two hours. Well, also, and talk to some. I mean, it paid well, wasn't it? Like. Like the mayor of the town yeah, or well, something? You have to remember, my character was also captain of the guard in this town, so I was immediately like, oh, we have to go find her immediately. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we have to go find her right now. And my guy was just like a laid-back dude. Yeah, and I think I even authorized payments from this, like, the, the city <laughs> like treasury to pay for the extra help. Did you, th Jacob, did you play a rogue? No, I played a bard. bard. That was my, I remember that you was were my first crack at a bard. Yeah, that's when he learned he doesn't like bard. <laughs> I don't like it too much. I'm I'm willing to give it a second chance because Michael always plays bards and they always seem OP. It's just a different mentality. Maybe you're just more of a rogue player. That's true. Anyways, continue. When they talked to her parents, they were like, "Yeah, she likes to hang out in the woods, so maybe she might have gone there and she probably got lost. Can you guys go find her?" Obviously, since this party was already tied into this family mm -hmm. somewhat, because fans came the town yeah uh, they're like sure let's go do it and after going into the forest and investigating for like half a day pretty much because it was probably about morning when you guys got there um you found a trail that had tracks that led off to the trail off the trail and into the woods and after noticing some weird things happening in the forest you guys stumble upon this gigantic tree trunk that is currently being used as a residency and after investigating for a while, they found that it was a hag's lair, but no one was home at the time. So they decided to just go and gung-ho and just raid the place to find the little girl locked in a cage on the second floor. Yeah. When they were about to get her out, it just so happened to be getting towards sunset, and the hags came home, and they're like, oh, look, food! <laughs> and then the party's like, oh, look, monsters! <laughs> and... It was at this point that one of my favorite things in that session happened, which is <laughs> they were like trying to intimidate us. And I just looked over at one of our hired help, the, the one that's being played by our friend, who was like this drugged up crazy drow. And I was just like, sick him. And then he just went in for it. <laughs> and, then, and then we rolled for initiative and, and chaos ensued. Yeah. <laughs> You were you were uh, pretty much babysitting. Yeah, it was like a prisoner as babysitting, and I basically stood in the back with my arms crossed that whole fight, and he just like <laughs> ran in and started <laughs> royally messing them up. He like low key soloed those those hags a little bit. I was I was playing a bard that didn't have many damaging spells. It was all like buffer and debuff spells. So yeah. <laughs> so you sat you sat on the cage the entire time, whacking the lock until it broke. <laughs> Something like that. I don't, yeah. Yeah, once once the eggs were finally taken down, um, they saved the child and then took her home. The parents were greatly thankful and all that. Um, but one key point I made sure to mention was the fact that they rescued her the night before her uh, 13th birthday. Yeah. Which, according to the lore of a hag, is when hags kidnap children, they... Uh, eat the newborn baby, and then they give birth to it, and then they return it to the house so that it's raised until it's 13. And then on its 13th birthday, at midnight, it tur transforms into a hag. Which is, like, so incredibly I, disturbing, if you ask me. Yes. <laughs> Which is, is... But then again, what isn't disturbing about D&D? &D? Pixies. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, exactly. 
Even then, they'll mess with you uh, a lot. <laughs> they'll bug you. <laughs> they'll mess with you, man. They'll make you taste weird things. Oh, they'll turn you into butterflies. They'll make you feel butterflies. Yeah. But um, you guys return the child to her home mm-hmm. just before midnight. And as you guys got paid very handsomely for rescuing the mayor's daughter, uh, as you guys were walking out, the grandfather clock struck midnight, and then all you hear from the second story is the cackling of a hag, and then you just hear her parents get ripped to shreds, and then everyone's just like, oh, snap, and then I just close the book, and I'm like, all right, cool, I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, this is the part where I felt so bad, because at this point, it's like 3.30 in the morning, and like and like such a a good plot twist that... I, Jacob, like, don't even remember because I was so tired. Like, like my face must have just been, like, the most of utter confusion. <laughs> I can tell you that <laughs> it then, was. And then and then you just closed the book and you're like, all right, we're good, boys. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was fun, though. It really, that was one of my first ever times DMing, too. So it was really nice to get my foot in the water with such a very, um, I'd say compelling story. Well, it was compelling for a short story. It but, was. Yeah, I had an easy time with that. It was really simple. It was really easy. Yeah. And then it made me think that like DMing's really not that hard. You just gotta, you know, remember that it's all about having fun with people that you want to have fun with. Yeah. And it's it's the player's story just as much as it is the DM's. It's just it's and in a way fifty fifty about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, if anything, it accomplished keeping me awake at such a late hour while I was tired. So that's, that could be pretty yeah, difficult. It, it was. <laughs> yeah. that, that, was a, that was a, that was an accomplishment of mine. Yeah, I is. still have the gold star from that. Yeah. <laughs> I, the forever DM gave him a gold star for that one. Cause I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> yeah. Ben was awake enough to, to remember. It's because I'm awake always. <laughs> you give everyone a gold star if you don't have to DM. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's like, this is the best session I've ever played. Thank you. <laughs> Gold star. I can be a player. Gold star. Hey, maybe he's just trying to be supportive, you know? Yeah, maybe <laughs> I'm just trying to treat my my young apprentice DMs that I never asked for <laughs> with some kindness because I looked up how to how to teach people how to do things, and kindness was one of the things that popped up on that list of things to do. <laughs> this is all Ben's plot to DM less. <laughs> <laughs> I give my good old my <laughs> good old college try. <laughs> hmm. So, our second story today was run by a friend of ours named Hayden. Yes, a good old buddy of mine, and he was running this game. I was playing this little little th- creature thing. I was playing this little mouse folk. It's a yeah, I was gonna say a mouse thing. folk, right? Uh, his name was Finn, and he was very very shy. And talk like this all the time. <laughs> But this isn't about Finn, nor is this about Mango, this Dalton's character. This one shot is heavily homebrew. Every like everything oh, about every character. This was wasn't. This was not a one shot. This was a campaign. Yeah, oh, really. This was a yes, campaign. and this particular story comes from. It wasn't about Mango. This is about Craig. Yeah, this is about. Wasn't Craig. It about Michael's character? This is about Michael's about character. Craig. Too bad Michael's he's not here today. Who isn't here? <laughs> it's okay. And neither is the DM. <laughs> we'll tell it for them. <laughs> So but this, well, you know what we do have this is the two other party members and me. <laughs> yes, yes, this is true. So this story. Yeah, I'm useless in this situation because I don't even remember this campaign at all. So, I just remember playing. Well, I took detailed notes on this, so I've got this. This, this is good. Character D, he was just some nerdy rat folk that lived in his mom's basement and just wrote for a living. <laughs> fan fiction for a living <laughs> no no no. i didn't write fan fiction for a living i blew things up for a living and that was what got me kicked out of my mom's house <laughs> because i accidentally blew, yeah, up I remember her ba- her blew up her roof <laughs> um anyways continue so this story is about craig and his journey to find out what happened to his wife and what happened to his family because all we know is that she's missing so we head off on the only lead he has which leads us to this little insane asylum on an island in the middle of the ocean. And as we arrive there, we're greeted as guests, you know, by the doctors and the nurses, and they invite us on to the island. 
like the secretary. Yeah, and we as we start looking around, you know, we're looking for Craig's wife. As far as we know, she's here somewhere. What we find out as we're investigating is there's a missing inmate. And this inmate is number 72. So yes. we are trying to find out who this inmate is. Who is inmate 72? And as we're investigating, we find the name of a woman. I uh, don't recall her name off the top of my head. If I ever find my journal again, I will let everyone know. <laughs> it's probably on this pile of stuff next to me. That's probably Ten weird. podcasts down the line, you'll be like, hey, from episode whenever... <laughs> We're talking about plot twists. The name of the dead wife was, or the missing uh, character or whatever, was uh, insert name here. Yes, <laughs> we'll I, make a post I will. Eventually. I will. I will do that. So. <laughs> We were started investigating, and as we were investigating, we finally got separated separated from the nurses that were going with us everywhere, and we start figuring out that they are keeping something from us. We don't know what it is, but we are they're keeping something from us. And we eventually find out that they know who Craig is, and they knew him before he ever came to this island. So now we're wondering, what is going on? We tell Craig what we know. He's freaking out. He panics. Craig runs off on his own to try to figure out what's going on. And that is when the doctor tells us something interesting, something terrible, something we probably were never meant to know. He tells us anyway. Well, that's always nice. Yes. So, meanwhile, <laughs> Craig is going towards the only lead he can. The only place on the island we weren't allowed to search is the lighthouse. So Craig, he goes and he flies up to the top of the lighthouse. He throws a guard off the side. You know, he's not messing around at this point. He breaks into the lighthouse. And once he does that, he finds the doctor, Finn, myself, and Mango, Dalton's character, all waiting for him. And Craig is looking around confused. And as he comes in, we finally tell him the truth. This entire island is an insane asylum, and Craig is a patient here. He is patient 72. And there is this whole quest, this old lead that they gave him, this entire thing was all set up to try to cure him as one really extreme attempt. And apparently it's been done multiple times, and he has failed to be cured every single time, and they've had to start all over again. The thing that was different this time is that he, we were here with him. He met two people along the way, and this time we can help him figure out what is going on. The woman's name that he was looking for, the woman that was that inmate, was an yeah, anagram. The person, who, the person of, who brought them yeah. here in the first place, right? Uh, that name was an anagram of his wife's name. It was rearranged letters of his wife's name, and he made up this name while he was insane because he was like, I have to find this woman who didn't exist. But it was an anagram of his wife's name because he couldn't deal with the fact that his wife was dead. And the way she died, uh, she drowned their kids in a river and he came home and saw that. And that is how she died because he freaked out. So he's been through a lot and he has some interesting mental issues and they're trying to help him cure this. So as That's like whack. it's really <laughs> whack. So it turns out this entire quest, this entire setup that we've done, and I was taking notes on painstakingly trying to figure out this mystery where I have no idea what's going on. The whole thing was a giant setup to try to cure Craig of his mental illness. That's very interesting how you're in Dalton's characters technically know the entire time there's nothing stopping them from knowing so technically like the character actually knows more than the player does which is weird to think about it was a really weird, weird thing at the time <laughs> but uh but now, now actually trying to remember the story i i just realized that Hayden totally ripped off shutter island yeah yeah that's <laughs> when you explained the plot whoa, i was whoa, like hold whoa, on whoa, hold whoa. on Maybe he was inspired by it, okay? Yeah. Hashtag inspired by a bard. Yeah. Didn't finish my sentence. But he did it in a way that made me, even though I've seen the movie already, didn't even think about it at the time. Which is crazy. Which makes it even which that much better. Which makes it, exactly, which makes it better. That much better of a delivery. Like, from like, from like a 
a paper perspective, like if we just put them side by side, it's like, oh, he totally got inspiration from this. But the way he did it made it so like it was it was creative in a way that he made it his own and it made it stand out a lot more. And I like that. Yeah, which is super cool. I, I, I mm. loved that so much. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Do you can you two think of any other times that we have thrown some incredible plot twists at us in our D and D games? I know I've probably used a lot. I just don't recall them off the top of my head. Uh, when I was listening to uh, the a couple episodes ago, when you guys mentioned um, Blaze's character. Oh yeah! Oh my god! That's a, is that a plot twist? I mean, it's just a thing that we should have seen, but we didn't. Because my character uh lava lamp he is like he tried so hard to impress blaze because i was trying to get on the college of mages um but uh that that might i i have a feeling that that agenda might change about lava getting on the um council but uh i mean that's a story for another time i mean like i saw him as the guide my character and on the council and never connected it like as a player or a character or anything like i just it was never brought up. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> what made this dude so powerful with fire? It was such a great... Oh, man. I don't even know if it is a plot twist, but it's just like... I mean, it all makes sense. It shouldn't be a plot twist, but it was because we're dumb. <laughs> My character wasn't there, but having heard that, like having heard the two separate stories about you guys going into the desert with a guide mm -hmm. and then having this backstory of Blaze, but never really connecting it. Yeah. It's just really interesting to know that your guys' characters influenced one of the most powerful characters in this In this world, world now. Them. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, that my world, I like to think, is full of little surprises. Like, I don't know if I'd call them plot twists, but... Yeah, exactly. Like, I can't... I can't, I can't exactly give it the name of plot twist, but it's definitely something that came out of left field that shouldn't have... <laughs> I feel like note to self, Jacob doesn't like when I do stuff <laughs> no, I love it, I was like, wow that's crazy, I'm stupid <laughs> that all makes so much sense and I'm just dumb and I never saw it coming for no reason whatsoever, I just, I don't know I feel like I should have seen it coming from a mile away and I didn't but even then it's still, it's still a good story element it's such a great story element so, oh my god, I'm still baffled by it. That was like, and you told me like, how many weeks ago was that? <laughs> like four or five weeks ago? <laughs> it was like four or five weeks ago. That would have been like episode two. It was episode three, session two, technically, because we like to make it complicated. Yeah, I think it was four. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I actually can't wait for you guys to interact more with the Council of Mages because they are full of stuff like that. Like it's no crazy because I feel like we've we've interacted with them so much as multiple different party members, yeah, like there's, characters. There's and always everything. more to know. That's crazy, especially since I'll be electing two new members soon, and one of them might just be a PC. Probably not. <laughs> Get wrecked. Sorry, well, Dalton. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> it's my fault. It's my fault for summoning the equivalent of a god's child. My bad. <laughs> That's 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 that is definitely a story for another day. <laughs> Hopefully after it's resolved because it currently isn't in that game. <laughs> <laughs> All because I wanted to get this uh, the attention of one of the council members. But it's okay. I took her out too much beforehand. Anyways, I think that might wrap up this episode of Traveler's Tips and Tales. Um some quick things to say. You can find us on most media platforms as just Traveler's Tips and Tales. We're tra at Traveler's Tips and Tales at Instagram, at, tra at Tips Tales on Twitter, Tumblr. We have a Tumblr page of Traveler's Tips and Tales. I have a Patreon. secret. You can go on Patreon. What? Our a Tumblr secret. page. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to post all of our memes there. All of them? Well, not all at once, but they will all end up. Oh, thank goodness. I feel like you should do all the <laughs> No. Then it, then they'll know how, how frequently I make memes. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We also have a Patreon, though, if you would like to support us on Patreon. Ben, uh, how many how many patrons do we have, Ben? 
absolutely none, which is a shame because that is where I post all of my unique homebrew content for all of you to enjoy. And if you are a high enough tier, you get to talk to us one-on-one -on -one every directly. month directly. Yep. And even if you're just a $1 patron, you still get to join our exclusive Discord. <laughs> Very very crazy discord yes where you get Can't to talk get to us and all the people that we have as guests on our show yeah. they stay as well as discord any of our other free. patrons they get they get to stay for free just because they were a guest yeah yep. <laughs> loophole if you want in without paying be a guest somehow <laughs> <laughs> at this without, point yeah. at this point if you became a patron and joined our discord so considering how few people there are, there's a decent chance you might end up a guest. <laughs> you might end up a guest. <laughs> yeah. And then you could just play us and stop supporting us on Patreon. But why would you do that? Because we're we're great. You should support us. Yes. I'm and great at selling. Uh, <laughs> we also Patreon. have an email, travelerstipsandtales <laughs> at gmail.com and a YouTube, Travelers Tips yes. and Tales. We are planning we on getting some additional content to you guys we have put all of our podcasts on youtube as well in addition to all the other places that um, we upload through anchor so you can also check it out on youtube and we are planning on getting some bonus content out on youtube as yes. well that we are all working on i know michael's yes. working on drawing some cool maps i'm working on mm -hmm. some homebrew and some world building videos uh still working on that Jacob makes our memes. I make our memes. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. All the memes you see, they were made by I. Although sometimes I do call him in the middle of whatever I'm doing. I was like, <laughs> Jacob, I got this idea for a meme. <laughs> and then I and then I stumble towards my computer as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> How many times have I done that now? <laughs> like once or twice, maybe. I don't know. It's fine. But anyways... I think that's everything we'd All like right. to hit on. Uh, thank you, Dalton, for joining us today. And uh, sorry to any viewers for this kind of hectic episode yeah michael <laughs> michael, <laughs> michael is the glue that holds us all together so when he's not uh, here we we, uh, we don't tell we him kind me. of fall apart don't tell him that but it's okay i think we did pretty good folks all right good good well, job ben good job dalton good job you got Jacob. my seal of approval give you a gold <laughs> star for that one the this has been Traveler's Tips and Tales, and until next time, have a great day. Yeah, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.